Hello and welcome back to the course. Today we'll be implementing a basic file search system that allow us to basically look into a directory or a folder, find what files are inside of it, and then use those files as upgrades. This will basically just be, you know, kind of acting as multiple kind of arrays and then kind of placing them in each other and then loading what we need to load. It's really fascinating and it's been leading into one of the uh, little projects that I've been working on away from YouTube which handles a lot of like directory access stuff and pure UI it's been really fun and uh, I might talk about that soon when I do a video on like HTTP calls and uh, yeah some other stuff anyway that that's completely off topic I'm already getting distracted by that project we're basically just upgrading our upgrade system and allowing it to use the folder in our file system this one the upgrades folder to just going to read through it all pick all of the upgrades from that and then add them to our game that way we don't ever have to add extra code for them we just go here's the files here's the folder do your job now a uh, quick thing to mention the discord is live i don't say this enough but I, you know please make sure to come down if you have any questions or just want to hang out a link is down in the description below now let's actually just get straight into it this is going to be uh really simple to start we just want to grab our upgrade menu and we'll go to the script for it so we've got this script here, which is just selecting a random, or this function here, which is selecting a random upgrade between the active or available upgrade array. But the way that we're populating that array right now is by actually setting this in the inspector. Now this is fine, but I don't want to have to manually add upgrades every time. And what happens if we get to, I don't know, 200 upgrades and I accidentally delete one? I won't know that I've deleted one because I, I will have to go through every upgrade every time and make sure that I've done that. So we're just going to kind of do this new version of the system. I'm going to empty out the available upgrade array. So now it should just be empty. And I'm going to remove all of the code inside of select random upgrade. And we're going to need a new variable, this new variable inside of the select random upgrade function specifically. There's going to be a function specific variable. It's just going to be called the upgrade underscore name underscore list. It's going to be an array of strings. Not oh, strings. Oh, wait, yeah, strings, strings, strings. There we go. So we'll just create it like we would normally create any variable. Now, we're going to need to do kind of a few for loops for this. Now, if you haven't done for loops before, they are really simple. I know I've covered for loops in this at some point, but as a quick... Uh, how to do or what they do for loop is basically uh, an iteration loop it will iterate over x number of things however many times you have specified and then after it's basically hit the amount you have specified it will stop running the code but it will do that for like it'll basically run that set of code that many times so what do we want to do here well we want to use a for loop and we'll go for name so this is going to be uh, actually we'll call this the we'll call this un, uh, u underscore name for upgrade name so for u underscore name in now this is where we're going to kind of access something that we've never used before and this is called dir access or directory access so capital d i r capital a c c e s s so right here for u name in dir access dir access or directory access is basically godot's way of being able to access things within the directory system or the file system just through code now there's a few different ways of doing this and i actually kind of like this way of doing it because it gives you a bit more control over what you want to do so what do we want to do here well we actually just want to go and grab every single name of every single upgrade within the upgrades folder so that means we're going to want to use dot get underscore files at now this will just retrieve files for us it will retrieve names of files now we, what path do we want to use well really simple thing we can do here is we can come down to the upgrades folder in our file system we can right click on it and we hit copy path uh, open up some double quotes and then paste in that path so what this will do now is it'll basically for every single name in directory access so every single name that we find inside this upgrades folder it will run a piece of code well the piece of code that i want to run here is going to be very simple it's just going to be grabbing that upgrade name list and then using 
dot append because what we want to do here is append that u underscore name that we get. So we'll append a u name. And now I'm going to, after this for loop, just print out the upgrade name list. So this should tell us everything that's in our upgrade list. Now there should be only one thing in our upgrade list and that is the null upgrade.tres. So let's try and run it just with this and we'll go from there. I'm hit control S and save. I'm going to hit run current scene because this should run. Yeah, this should run the immediately. As soon as the upgrade menu is uh, kind of created, it will run this code. So we can either press F6 or hit the little snapper up in the top right corner. There we go. Now, if I go down here, you can see it's grabbing the null upgrade.tres, so the null upgrade resource. But now you're probably sat there thinking, well, what good is just grabbing a name of a string? Well, that's where the next for loop comes in. So the next for loop we're going to want to do is going to basically be for loading up each individual upgrade that we have inside of that folder or inside of that array that we've just set. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to write for, not do, for u underscore name in, and we're going to grab the upgrade name list, and we're going to write dot size, because we need to make sure that we're getting the correct amount of uh, files here. And to do that, we need to just get the size right, because arrays start counting from 0 to 3, and if you start adding from arrays, sometimes you skip a number. It's it's a whole kind of annoying thing. So we're going to just kind of do this in a very, very easy way. So we'll do for uname in upgrade name list dot size. We're just going to basically grab the available upgrade. Uh, do, 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 do. The available upgrade var uh, variable here, which is an array of base upgrade. And we're going to write dot, and we're going to append. Now, what are we going to append? Well, we're going to actually append uh, an entire thing here. We're going to write load, because we want to load a file. Now, we're going to grab that path that we originally used to get the files. So we can copy that and paste that in. And then at the very end, we're just going to write plus upgrade name list and then as the array accessor we're just going to write u underscore name now what that should do is actually append all of our available upgrades to the or append all of the upgrades that are inside of that folder to the available upgrades array and now the last thing we actually have to do here is go and get our upgrade options or the little windows that we want to populate with our upgrades populated. Once again, we can do that with one final for loop. So I'm going to go for upgrade underscore or for upgrade in upgrade underscore option array. And then I'm going to shuffle the available upgrade uh, list that we have here or the available upgrade array. So I'm going to write available upgrade dot shuffle. And then the last thing that I need to do here is basically just grab the upgrade and then go dot set underscore upgrade option and then the available upgrade dot pick random. So what that's going to do is pick a random upgrade from a shuffled upgrade array and then populate the menu that we want to populate with it. Now that pretty much handles our uh, selection of random upgrades. So what we can do here is we can run the scene and we can just see what happens. Well, everything is now null. Everything should be null, right? That, that makes sense because our upgrade options actually preset themselves to null if nothing is being passed through. So technically, we don't actually know if that's working. So what we're going to do here to make sure it's working is if we double click on the null upgrade dot resource we've created, we're now going to go and duplicate this. So we're going to press control D and duplicate. We're going to name this upgrade one, then we'll do one more, cannot be done on tree root, wrong one, there we go, do one more for upgrade two, and then we'll do one more for upgrade three. Now I'm going to click the snapper again. Ah, and uh, the reason why I'm getting very confused here is because I need to actually rename the upgrade menus as well or the upgrade, the actual upgrades themselves, the upgrade names inside of them, I need to rename. 
So I'm going to rename 1 to 1, 2 to 2, and 3 to 3. And now we'll hit the snapper and see what happens. Well, we've got three threes there. See how the randomization is. It's a little bit, it's not entirely random, right? Because there's a 33% chance of getting any of these twice, basically. Well, yeah, there's, there's a specific percent chance of getting these twice sometimes, and that can cause some issues. And then sometimes we're getting the null upgrade, which still makes sense because technically we're passing in the null upgrade. So what we can do here is remove the null upgrade from this and just throw it into the upgrade folder. Now, an issue will kind of come for this. Uh, that's not where I wanted it. I wanted to make sure that it's in this folder here. Yeah, there we go. So an issue is going to come from this, right? Now, if we go back into the upgrade options, we actually have to, well, we've preset the base null upgrade here and that has changed or the location of it has changed, right? Now, this is where I get to show off something really cool. If I click on upgrade option, you'll see that the null upgrade is just still set, even though I moved it through the file structure, which is really good. That's really cool. And that's kind of why we like using uh, exported variables. So I can hit the snapper one more time, let it run through. That's, I need to hit the snapper on the uh, upgrade menu. There we go. Three, two, one. And now we're going to get a random one of all of these, which basically means we can get three, three times, two, two times, one, one time, or one, three times, and you know, kind of go from that. Now, the more upgrades you have, the less duplication you're going to get. And the next thing to kind of add to this or end up adding to this is going to, of course, be the ability to make sure that that upgrade hasn't been set so you don't get duplication or a few other things. Now, we're not going to do that because I have an entirely different idea in mind for how we're going to be using the three upgrade options and how their upgrade's going to go. And that's basically going to be setting different upgrade pools, which means different upgrade folders for each option menu. Uh, the left one will be for like good karma upgrades, the right one will be for bad karma upgrades, and the middle one, which is going to be the more intense code by a little bit, is basically just going to flip a coin and then make a decision based off of whatever the coin flip says. But that is going to be for a different video. The next thing we want to do in here is actually handle the storage of this upgrade. And this leads into the next thought. Right now, we are resetting the current scene, which is resetting everything that isn't stored within an autoload. So we're never actually storing one of these upgrades. Even if we try to signal it out to something else, it's never getting stored. So how do we kind of deal with that? Well, really, really simply put, we, you know, we, we've got this thing, this signal for storing upgrades. And I put this in the last video to help anybody that has like a level system designed out or anything along those lines. So you can use this, you can create another level and you can just, you know, switch, not entirely switch scenes, but just switch the level out and then kind of go from there and that will be fine. But if you're running into the same issue I am, then what we can do here is we can just add another variable to a globalized storage. So if I go to the global stack container here, and then I go uh, create a new variable for the currently underscore selected underscore upgrade of type base upgrade and set it equal to null. I then pretty much just add a functionality into this to make sure the currently selected upgrade gets set. Now we're already doing a signal for this, so I can, to be very simple with this, just go and connect that signal, which is probably what I will do for now. So we go signal bus dot on underscore upgrade purchase dot connect, and we'll just call this on underscore upgrade underscore selected. Go and make a function for that. It needs an upgrade parameter of base upgrade void return type. And then inside of it, we just grab the currently selected upgrade and we set that equal to upgrade. And now we have the, now we have the ability to actually store this upgrade, right? Every time we press that button, it will store the upgrade. Now, the next thing that we actually want to do with this is 
kind of get it so the menu can close, right? Now there's a really easy way of doing this. We can go and create a signal with an upgrade option or within the upgrade option scene. So we'll go and create a signal and the signal will be for uh, on underscore upgrade underscore selected. So I cannot spell the word selected. And we just emit that when the upgrade is purchased. So we'll go on underscore upgrade purchased, nope, on upgrade selected dot emit. And now we need something listening to it. And I'm going to teach you something really, really useful that I find very useful for certain parent child relationships within Godot. That is, if we go to the upgrade menu here and we remember that the options array we are populating like so right we are just placing or we are exporting it basically and then setting it ourselves that's actually fine and we can use that to our advantage now there are two ways of doing the thing that i want to do we could basically call the hbox container use dot get children and then go from there or we can just populate an array and go from there now you're probably thinking what the hell am i on about i'm apparently in a bit of a daze today so what I'm on about is basically creating a new function for uh, connecting the signals for the upgrade option. So we'll just do connect, connect, underscore, upgrade, underscore, options, underscore, signals. Make that void. And now we can do the really fun thing of just going for i in the upgrade option array i dot on upgrade purchased not on upgrade purchased i did that again on upgrade selected dot connect and we just pick what we want to connect it to right now i didn't do it all for i in there we go now, the only thing we have to connect it to is if we scroll down to the on button or on exit button down, we can hit control C, copy that name, paste that into the connection function here, and then we just have to run it. So we can just run that function, connect upgrade options signal, hit control S and save. And now if I press play and actually run the full project, we'll let the timer count down, we'll get our random upgrades with our random prices, with our random stats, and we can hit buy, and it now resets the scene like it should do. And that is pretty much how we plan on handling upgrades in the future. Now, as I said, there is going to be a lot of changes we make to this to implement different upgrade pools and just more upgrades in general. And yeah, so very quickly moving on, the next thing that we're going to do is going to be creating a full upgrade manager. That's what I want to dedicate the entire next video to, which could actually be a relatively long one. So make sure you're ready for that. Uh, yeah, pretty much that's all I have for today. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're having a good day and a great game dev journey, and I will see you in the next video.